verses 35 through 40. John chapter 6, verses 35 through 40. Again, I'll be reading from the New International Version, so if your sounds a bit different from mine, that will be the reason. John chapter 6, the verses 35 through 40. As follows. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me and still do not, you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me. Whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not only to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all that he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. God bless his word. For just a few minutes today, I want to speak to you from this topic. I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. No matter who you are, where you been or what you've done. God loves you. Uh, today, I, I want to talk, uh, talk about what I hope will be the first in a series of sermons on the I Am sayings of Jesus in the Gospel of Paul and John. I, 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 I plan, plan these sermons for some months now, maybe even a year ago, but the time never seemed to be just right. By the time I wanted to start on it, something happened or I just went in jail. It, it, it may not be the right, be right for all of them now, but I think this first one, anyhow, is right for right now. All right. When, when you're hungry, mm -hmm. when, when, you, when you're hungry, yeah, yeah. what do you want to do? When, when you're hungry, what are you? What, what, what is your? <coughs> what is your priority? Normally, it's to satisfy your hunger, right. to, 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 to get full, to get full. Sometimes, sometimes when we're hungry, especially if we're very hungry, and we finally get to something to eat. We may eat too much, All right. and, and instead of being satisfied. We just might end up being uncomfortable from overeating. In, in our desperation, we may really overdo it. We've got a lot of bad news these last few days. People are afraid of what's waiting for them in the future. There's a sense, there's this feeling of uncertainty. We don't know what's going to happen during these tough economic times, uh, I think a word for you is don't become so anxious about the state of the economy that you make bad decisions. Do I need to say that one again? Don't, 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 don't be so anxious and excited about the state of the economy that you make bad decisions. And don't forget to take care of those weightier matters. Right now, we're concerned with our mortgages, 401k, and other retirement plans, how we're going to buy groceries, pay utilities, and medical bills. We're concerned uh, about a lot of things. We're facing lots of bread issues right now, aren't we? Bread issues are basic issues. Uh, bread issues are issues which are fundamental to life. I've been watching the news and some folk are suggesting many ideas concerning what we need to be doing during these tough times. Right. Many of us are wondering what can
can be done to ease the pressure. Well, I tell you, I think one thing that you can start doing is to put that piece of plastic in the envelope and put it in the back of the drawer. And then start paying down the bill. I don't care what you hear anybody say, put it away. That's part of what has gotten us into this problem, this situation right now. Now don't, don't get me wrong, ain't nothing wrong with plastic, but, 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 but plastic can be overdone. And, and most of us, many of us, maybe just about all of us have used it sometime when we didn't need to use it. And in the first part of chapter 6 of the Gospel according to John, Jesus fed a multitude of people. Uh, yeah, remember he had these, he fed these folk with a few little fish sandwiches and, and they ate and got, got there enough. And after the crowd had eaten, the disciples of Jesus got into a boat and proceeded to go across the lake to Capernaum. While they were crossing the lake, uh, the wind rose up a little bit uh, and, and the waters got a little rough, but they looked up and they saw Jesus walking toward them on the walk. Walking in the midst of the high wind and the rough sea. Somebody needs to be reminded today that Jesus is never too far away. Don't, don't, don't you forget that. Don't you get so caught up in whatever your situation is. And I know uh, all of us are facing some kind of rough situations here, but don't forget, don't lose sight of the fact that Jesus ain't too far away. When you when, when you least expect him, he just might show up. When you start thinking Jesus ain't nowhere, nowhere around, you, you might just look up and that Jesus uh, uh, Yeah, yeah, the disciples were rowing their boats on the turbulent water and Jesus was walking on the turbulent water. You see, turbulence doesn't stop Jesus. Turbulence doesn't slow down Jesus. <laughs> and we need to understand that we are serving a God who, who in the midst of our turmoil can still come to us, find us, and minister to us just how we need to be ministered to. The next day, the next day when the crowd, the crowd that had eaten Realized that Jesus was not there and that he was across the lake, they boarded boats and went to him in Capernaum. And they went looking for Jesus. And when they found him, they wanted to know how he got there since he hadn't crossed the lake with his disciples. I think I need to tell you something. The Lord can do some stuff that we can't do. Uh, yeah, he can do some stuff that we can't do. And it doesn't pay you to always try to go around trying to figure out how God did what he did. Just recognize that he did. Uh, 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 trying to folk running around now going half crazy trying to figure out how God did what he did. How, how did God create all of this stuff? I quit trying to figure that out a long time ago. Some of y'all worried about whether or not he started it with some mud and a man and blew into it and opened the paper. Somebody else is confused about whether or not evolution did. I ain't worried about all that. I don't know but one thing. I'm here. However, the first one of me got here, I don't know, but I'm here. But I believe that the God who is over it all sustains me. That's what I'm trying to say. We get caught up sometimes trying to figure out God. You can't figure out God. You ain't got enough sense to figure out God. They were trying to figure out how Jesus had got across. And they knew that he didn't get into the boat with the disciples. That's when Jesus took the opportunity. That's when Jesus took the opportunity to do some teaching. Jesus said, Jesus, Jesus said, Jesus said, you, you, you don't want to be with me because of the signs you saw. You, no, no, you don't want to be with me because of the signs you saw. You want to be with me because you saw a free meal ticket. Uh, you got full and, 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 and you want some more. You know, I, I figured it out in these 30 something years that I've been trying to trying to pastor. You know, a lot of folks come to church not because they're looking for Jesus, because they want to be with Jesus. They're coming because they're looking for a free meal ticket. 